Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about an area growth in MTG Finance. There's not many areas, and maybe in the next video I'll do 93, 94. I am well aware of that format, and looks like it's gaining steam. But here's a format that is getting very popular now. It is Popper. Now the popper cards themselves are commons and therefore they're not actually that valuable because there's many copies of them. So I'm not saying let's invest in the actual non-foils. So popper is a format where you can only play common. So it's relatively cheap when you compare it to anything else. Even EDH, popper is way cheaper than that. Most people can make the main decks and not spend above $20 to have a competitive popper deck. It's a great format. I do, I will be making a few deck techs and I do have a few of my own. So it is not the, I would say it is not the common non foils that have any interest financially. It's the foil version. So this card is around, let's say, a dollar in the market. It has been going up a ton, but the foil is $15. Dollars. Let me say that again. Fifteen dollars for a common foil. It is from Apocalypse, so it's much much older than some of the other cards I'm going to show you today. Fifteen dollars is really good for a bulk foil. I'm almost certain that this card is in many local game stores bulk, and you should be looking. Well, you should be looking for all of these cards. Prohibit is a $10 foil. I remember this from Invasion. The older foils, what's kind of unique about them, especially Uncommon and Rare, is, well, I guess in Common doesn't make a difference. And back in the day, if you had a foil Common, it would replace a Common. If you had a foil Uncommon, it would replace an Uncommon. If you had a foil Rare, you wouldn't get a Rare. You wouldn't get, you wouldn't double up like today. So the common prohibit is very good. I like it. I've always kind of liked it. The kicker's kind of nice. It's like a pseudo mana drain, depending on which way you want to do it. It's a little bit better on one side, a little a more expensive, and it's a little worse and cheaper, or the same price on the other side. I am not at all shocked. Whenever a new format becomes popular, it's not the regular cards that go up in price. It's the foils especially if that old format relies on older cards. I would say this, if you have, and I think every Magic player has just random foils that they own from back in the day, it's time to go and look at them. And the foil commons are probably going to be worth a ton more than your foil uncommons and or foil rares from these older sets because of Popper. Popper is the real deal. Am I totally sold on 93, 94? I'm not positive, but I am totally sold on Popper. Popper is not Tiny Leaders. It is not Frontier. It is the real deal. I have always said this. You look at the prices. Devoted Druid is a $110 foil. That tells me, huh, that's pretty good. Miss Cloak Herod. And we'll talk about some foils today that you can get in standard today that are very good commons because that's what I would aim for. There's a lot of value in commons today that are being played in popper and foil. Now, the non-foil versions, there's just too much of them. There's just too many of them. Like you would have even the card the flag bearer from Apocalypse. Apocalypse wasn't open very much, but that's only a, a dollar card. No one's going to get rich off the non-foils, but you could hit a home run on the foils, right? So you look at all these, and you look at my good friend, the Horseshoe Crab, which is a $9.50 foil. It's fantastic. I think this is kind of what I wanted to see. And you can see uh, Rivals of Ixalan has two cards we're going to go over. And in foil, these are $4 cards, four $6 cards, which is fantastic because they're commons. So what I'm saying is there is a there is a lot of value in these commons, especially the older they are, the more likely the foil will be just a crazy price that you don't expect. Definitely worth just going over what you have. 
I have a whole bin of these stuff, and I'm going to go over them. I'm hoping to find any of these on this list. Even Circle of Protection Blue is pretty good. But let's talk about Devoted Druid, which is one of the... I mean, it's just very good. So it's not only good in Popper. It's also very good in Modern. Like, when I mean very good, it has an infinite combo in Modern, which is relatively easy to pull off. It's an interesting card, and unless they reprint it, regular non-foil is around $6. A foil copy is $110, which is fantastic for a common. So if you are lucky enough to find this, yeah, you need to buy it. <laughs> you need to buy it. I don't necessarily see this going down in price. I mean, there's always the danger of reprints, right? They can always reprint any of these cards. And then, therefore, the price will plummet like any good reprint. The purpose of the reprint is to plummet the price a lot of times. But for $110, I guarantee you this is in the store somewhere in Houston. It's just sitting there for like 2 bucks in the, maybe at the dollar bin. And it's actually over $100. So I, it's not something that a non-Magic player can look at. It's not something that a Magic player can look at and say, hmm, $100. At most, I would think this is a $10 card, but even then, like, if I didn't price check it, there's no way I would pay $10 for it. Maybe, at most, I would pay $5 for the foil copy, because I don't know. I mean, it's crazy that this card's still 5 bucks. I expected it to drop, so it did hit over 10 at one time, and there's so many of it. If you open Shadow More, you just have dozens of this, which I do. So let's talk about today. I know you guys are all about the today. This card is $6 in foil. I don't expect it to drop that much as more is open. Probably like a $3, $4 foil. It is very, very good. It is a one drop unblockable. Now, what does that mean? It's a one drop merfolk unblockable. It means you can stack enchantments, rancors. You can go to town with this one. And there is a modern deck. There is a modern deck that would probably play this, but I'm not sure if how much of it is the modern deck and how much of it is popper. I do realize this is a very, very good popper card, but it's also a very good modern card. So just like Angler, the Gurmak Angler, this is one of those cards you look at and you say, a lot of value, perfect one drop for a lot of these decks that want to put enchantments on this card. Trade for it. Now, will the non-foil ever be worth anything? Probably not. Just too much of it is going to be printed. So I would... Def okay, again, do not invest in the non-foil. Do not invest in the non-foil. The only MTG Finance interest would be the foil copy, especially of these newer sets. Even if you, like, of the older set, like, what was the plan for Apocalypse? Wait 20 years and then hope the card goes from 10 cents to a dollar and then buy listed for a quarter? It doesn't make sense right but the foils because they have a much higher multiplier and when someone trades for a foil one they're going to want four copies of it people always say how do what's the best way to sell a card normally you want to sell a card in fours so if you have one noble hierarch if you have two noble hierarchs the best way to sell a card is to trade for another two and then sell the play set convenience also the pricing also the shipping is kind of consolidated there's not that many customers that can quote lose packages and, and or quote send you counterfeits back the risk is pretty minimal when you sell it in play sets oh and this is kind of the reason i want to make the video horsey crab has always been a very good card i've always enjoyed it i'm glad that there's a format that can now play it and it's actually a good card in the format popper is a real deal I like it. It reminds me of tiny leaders, but not as much uh, greediness. Like no one owns Popper, right? And tiny leaders, I think the reason tiny leaders, tiny leaders was this format. And in my opinion, it failed because people were trying to make too much money from it. They were going to trademark tiny leaders. Then they were going to ban this and ban that. And so you had like people who were power hungry and they didn't really know like how to how can I say? Popper is better. Popper is like ED8. It's better for the people to own it than for an individual to try to profit off the name or the the game. That was very distasteful to me. 
and popper is going to be good i love popper i think we're going to see more popper events uh i know for one thing that they are not going to really you're not going to really lose money playing pop not playing popper so here's another one that's four dollars and fifty cents and will never be over a dollar as a non-foil so it is a human pirate one one for one black yeah i mean it comes a two one pirate and the pirate theme is pretty good because pirates are we will see them again i'm almost certain that we will see another pirate set again so my biggest takeaway is from popper is foils go to your store to the common foil but every store has one and make a list of these cards that are now kind of pricey and see if you can find them maybe you get lucky and maybe you hit a jackpot like the flag bearer which is 15 dollars I mean, Devoted Druid, I mean, you could hit one of those, and that's a $100 bill. And everyone should play Popper. Anyway, bye guys.